Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted and privileged to welcome a very, very senior corporate leader from the US, Elizabeth Varghese. Elizabeth, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ashutosh. I really am grateful to be uh, included on your show. Thank Thank you. you. Elizabeth is the global and America's leader, talent and HR strategy transformation for IBM. She's an author, and all of you know I'm very partial to authors. So she's an author of a book titled Blockchain Reaction, The Future of How We Live and Work, and we'll talk about her book. Uh, She's a member of the Council of Advisors of the SETI Institute, and she has been nominated as one of the top inspirational leaders of 2022. Elizabeth, what an amazing journey you've had. But let me start with uh, human resources. And my first question to you is, you know, I'm, I'm much older than you, but when I started working, there used to be a personnel manager, there used to be an industrial relations manager, and that seems to have evolved into a CHRO. I want to know from you, how has human resources evolved over the years? That's a great, profound question, right? And I think um, I was very much like, you know, you, when I started my career in HR, as we call it today, mm-hmm. you know, even the degree that I went to Tata Institute, uh, which is a mm-hmm. wonderful institution in a suburb in, in Mumbai, India, mm-hmm. yeah. um, you know, our program was called PM and IR, you know, personal management and industrial relations. Correct. So this is, you know, back in the 90s. So, uh, and I remember doing, you know, going to field work agencies, factories, and, you know, the the HR, the, the personal management department was this room with you know, lots of paper files. And, you know, we interns, you right. sit and look through stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, and, I, and I believe the big reason for that is uh, as we've, uh, moved into the you know into the third industrial revolution you know we're starting the fourth now Mm -hmm. right there was a lot of cognizance and focus on technology from a manufacturing perspective from the customer perspective Mm -hmm. i think lots of people tended to forget about the most important component of any business or any endeavor Mm -hmm. any organization right people Um, so the the lens was very much i think more industrial more manufacturing centric but we saw a big shift with that as there was more appreciation i think of the the, the, the skills that are not just related to, um, you know, making something, but more around creation of mm. ideas and creation of experiences and relationships. Mm. So I think that was really kind of the, you know, the genesis of uh, what we started seeing as CHROs and, mm. you know, the, the human resources, right, which mm. I think is a term that lots of people still don't agree with, <laughs> the, the resource part of mm. it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think there's still a journey to be fulfilled there. Correct. There will be some more nomenclature changes. I'm sure. And yet I have uh, spoken to so many uh, HR leaders from so many different companies. The CHRO's role has become very critical uh, in the C-suite with more and more CEOs relying heavily on CHROs. Why is this happening? So the pandemic so has really highlighted the mm-hmm. need for a strategic partner who understands, you know, what people need, how to engage them, how to motivate them. So I think the pandemic, I say this very deliberately highlighted, it did not create these things. Mm-hmm. Right? These, the trends that we're seeing that this rush towards CEOs understanding or embracing mm-hmm. the role of the CHRO was not, is not new. The mm-hmm. pandemic highlighted all of it, right? So I just want to say that and set that aside. Mm-hmm. I think increasingly CEOs have found that, you know, you can do a lot of things with technology and data and finance, mm-hmm. but when you're trying to engage people, the hearts and minds, it's not that easy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, you know, historically they've kind of neglected that part of it, but mm-hmm. now there is understanding that you can't really move your organization forward mm-hmm. without engaging your people. And I think that's where the role of HR has really become, you know, kind of the keeper of the flame, right? Okay. You, It's not just about, you know, all the ticks and ties around compliance and policies, mm-hmm. but HR really needs to understand what makes our people tick, mm-hmm. what motivates them, how can we help them bring more than their, you know, uh, their best contributions to the table. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. And, you know, you just spoke about the pandemic, uh, but 
I would love to get your perspective that the pandemic threw up two very interesting factors. One was work from home and the other was, which is now talked about, the great resignation. So I'd love to get your perspective on how did work from home change organizations and how did the great resignation, which seems to have spurred the gig economy, uh, changed organizations? So I'll say two things to begin with, and, you know, maybe it'd be a little provocative, but push back on you a little bit, Ashutosh, in the sense that, you know, um, I don't agree with the great resignation. Okay. Um, it's not a great resignation. It's a reckoning. It's a reset mm -hmm. that was in play for over a decade. Mm -hmm. And people who've been, you know, in this space over the years recognize it, right? It's not new. I mean, somebody wrote about it and put this negative, I mean, I'm saying this deliberately, mm -hmm. right? Like, I'm not resigned. I'm very optimistic. Okay. I do not see this as a negative event. Yeah. I see this more as the highlighting of something that was always happening and was happening in the background, right? Mm -hmm. So I just, just, just to kind of say no, that. No, I'm right? glad. I'm so um, glad you've given this perspective. Um, and I say, and, I, and I'll talk, you know, share a little bit more of my views there uh, in a bit, but I just want to go back to the work from home thing. I mean, the truth is that, you know, companies like IBM, I work for IBM, there were many companies who were already doing remote work, right? They were trusting their employees to do their best work no matter where they sit. Mm -hmm. They were deploying technology, collaboration tools to help make all of that happen. Mm -hmm. You know, um, at IBM, you know, we had people who'd never, this is before pan the pandemic, right? We had young people joining the organization, collaborating, becoming friends, forming relationships, uh, you know, collaborative relationships, mm -hmm. planning vacations together, right? I mean, as friends, right? Mm -hmm. All of that can happen in a remote work environment if there is trust. Trust, you know, from the organization, trust between individuals. Mm -hmm. So what we found then through the pandemic is that the organizations that either struggled with work from home, who had to change their paradigms about work from home, mm -hmm. were the ones who hadn't done it before. Mm -hmm. And the ones who, you know, had to figure out what to do were not just figuring out the technology, mm -hmm. sending the laptops home, you know, making sure single sign-on was working and everyone had bandwidth. Mm -hmm. But they were also and continue to struggle with trust. Mm -hmm. Do we trust our people to do their best work? Do our managers trust their employees enough? Do our managers trust themselves enough to understand what employees do? Mm -hmm. Right. So um, the 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 focus of the, or the, the pandemic really highlighted uh, the aspect of trust, which I talk about technology. Do you have the right technology and task? Because task essentially is one, the employee understanding their outputs and you know mm -hmm. KPIs and, and the managers and teams understanding mm -hmm. the task enough to know what to expect, right? Okay. So, uh, so I just wanna, when I think about what organizations have dealt with with mm -hmm. the work from home uh, you know, journey, mm -hmm. uh, I think you'll see that it's you know, one of these three things and the most difficult one continues to be trust. Mm -hmm. It's easy to put on technology, yeah. It's easy to, you know, uh, make sure people exchange information on task, but um, trust is is what is lacking. And I think till organizations build cultures that enable trust and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, require uh, trust in engagements, I think it's not going to be a shift that they can make. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, and my next question, Q, is on technology. Um, the more I talk to HR leaders around the world, uh, the more I see them talking about technology uh, and, you know, uh, someone who's even used said that they're starting to use artificial intelligence to be able to start determining what kind of people will fit what kind of roles. Uh, I'd love to get your perspective on how is, how is technology changing the HR function? Yes, um, very, very important shift. And I think, you know, it's, it's the conversation we had earlier on, right, about the shifting role of HR and mm -hmm. all of that is going to be accelerated by mm -hmm. what we see in technology. So just to take a step back, I think the biggest shift that I've observed and I've been talking about with technology mm -hmm. across the board, right, um, is related to the potential of technology. So, you know, I Ashutosh, back in the day when, you know, we were getting our degrees and getting mm -hmm. our MBAs, right, um, there was always this classic approach to business strategy and competitive strategy. You know, you came up with a strategy, and then you figured out what would it take to execute on the strategy. You mm -hmm. figured out, well, what kind of technology do I need? What kind of team do I need, et cetera? Mm -hmm. Now, what has happened in the past decade or so is that that paradigm has been completely flipped. 
Mm-hmm. Your business strategy is determined by your imagination and the capability of technology. So the potential of technology is actually driving businesses, right? And we see that more and more. So that flip has happened across the board. Not everyone's recognized it, mm. right? Uh, but it's how do you harness technology to make right. your work happen, to you know, make your products happen, to innovate, to connect with people. Mm. So in that context, that is as true for HR as well. Mm. And what we're seeing is that the immersion of technology into every part of our personal lives has mm you know, kind of transcended and come into our work lives as well. Mm -hmm. And employees are asking, well, if Amazon knows what I need, they know I need laundry detergent and make it easy to buy and know when it's over. Why doesn't my organization make it as easy for me to, you know, look up my paycheck or execute a transaction on behalf of my customer? Um, They're also asking like, well, if Netflix knows what kind of content I like to watch, I like documentaries or I like, you know, uh, a certain genre of movies, why cannot my organization serve up learning content mm. based on my learning preferences? Mm. And, you know, if I'm Elizabeth and I like listening to podcasts on the subway to work, mm. why doesn't my organization feed me more podcasts that I can consume and learn from, right? right. So that expectation of experience has definitely come into the world of employee mm. expectations. Mm. And that is what HR has to respond to. Uh, and then I think the the third thing I just want to quickly, you know, so there is this whole aspect of uh, business disruption, right, and flipping strategy and technology. Mm -hmm. Related to that is also the fact that the barriers to entry in every industry have changed, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, NASA's competitors and collaborators are, you know, a record company, a bookseller, and a car company, right? Virgin Galactic and Tesla and, uh, uh, you know, SpaceX, right? So, uh, so, sorry, uh, uh, Blue Origin. Mm -hmm. So, We've seen that happen. With that, the requirement of every organization in terms of skills has changed. So everybody needs data scientists. Everybody needs, you know, social media experts. Mm -hmm. Um, So the talent requirements have changed. And then when you kind of layer that with the expectation, HR has to solve all of that. So technology has really changed everything. Um, HR has to apply technology to all of those things. Amazing, amazing. Uh, what a great response, Elizabeth. Let me now move to your book. Uh, and you're the author of a book titled The Blockchain Reaction, The Future of How We Live and Work. Uh, let me first ask you, is this book available on Amazon and all over the world? Yes, thank you. Yes, so the book is available on Amazon. Um, okay. Yes, uh, the and book. Uh, thank you. Chance to show th- Please show us the book again. Oh, sorry. Huh. Sure, sure, sure. I, um, never never be shy blocking. of showing your own book. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So Thank you. Yes, the I will for the book on Amazon, right. and I'm going to ask all our viewers and listeners to go and check out the book also. Uh, but before I ask you anything about the book, I want to ask you. I mean, you've been speaking of technology, and I was so fascinated when I was reading about you, an HR leader writing on blockchain. What made you write on technology, uh, and where did you get? so much learning from so you, you know i've been i see myself as a business person That's right sure. my yeah. domain is hr in the yeah. sense that you know i focus on people uh, and i think mm-hmm. that people are the most important part of any business yeah. right um, yeah. without people you know name one company that works without people right sure. does not exist mm-hmm. um, so to, to that extent uh, you know the work that I've been doing over the years, really, since the 90s. And I should just, you know this, right? Back in the day, you know, uh, the processes in HR and finance and supply chain were very manual. We started seeing the infusion of technology and HRIS systems, mm-hmm. you know, in the in the 90s, right? And we all, at least, you know, we thought, I thought we were all so cool running around, you know, weaving technology into our solutions and mm-hmm. discussions. Mm-hmm. So that journey, I think uh, many people in HR and every function really have been on. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's been a big part of, you know, how we've looked at the transformation of the HR function. Mm-hmm. Uh, what can technology do to transform the experience, the data sets, the data fabric of the organization, right? The security landscape, digital identity. So all very important issues, which may not be as evident to, you know, folks who've looked at HR traditionally mm-hmm. in the past, right? So the whole aspect of weaving in of technology into how 
HR does its work or how it can do its work mm. has become extremely critical. Mm. Uh, so, you know, with that, um, you know, in that landscape, mm. um, you know, over, over the past five years, really, uh, and of course, you know, being at IBM really transforms your perspective on technology. You know, you're mm -hmm. surrounded by super smart people, way smarter than I am, who are building, you know, cool things. And you're in this environment that helps you think and learn about different things. So, um, you know, I have to acknowledge that being in that environment definitely helps you. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, I'll go back to that in a second, but when you immerse yourself in, you know, in a situ you know, situations or uh, peer groups that really mm -hmm. help you think about technology, you understand more, right? You learn more. So anyway, uh, for, from the blockchain perspective, I've been very interested in the conversation, you know, about five, six years now, um, as you know, it, back from the early days. Mm. But I'd observed that the narrative was very much crypto centric, very much, you know, uh, finance centric. And um, in the, the, as you know, many people actually think of blockchain and think Bitcoin, right? It, they're almost like synonymous. Yeah. Mm. But blockchain is just a technology. Correct. It's just an enabler. Absolutely. And when you think about how can we use it in different situations, um, especially when you think about the benefits of blockchain, that's when I you know, started thinking about how it can be applied to the talent ecosystem uh -huh. and how it can be applied to the data fabric of mm -hmm. organizations because the real problems we are trying to solve are how do we you know, understand data? How do we right. uh, you know, collaborate around data sets? How do we share data that in a validated and um, you know, truthful way? Mm. Um, so that was kind of the genesis of some of this. And uh, you know, so over the years, I've been writing a lot on blockchain and the talent ecosystem. So, uh, you know, the book really coalesces a lot of those ideas and conversations, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and, and just puts that really down, uh, I think, into this into this book. So Amazing. that was the journey. Amazing. So, you know, uh, I'm, I'm so fascinated that you can actually use uh, blockchain and you're so right, you know, at the end of it, it's a technology that you're using for talent management and human resources. Tell me a little more on how you're doing this. So there's two things, right? So um, when you say how we're doing this, so there are lots of companies deploying blockchain mm -hmm. in the talent ecosystem. Now, the talent ecosystem yeah. is very simplistically just a data, you know, data set, right? Okay. So, when, but the most profound and complex data set, mm -hmm. because when you think about individuals like you and I, we all have digital identities now. Okay. Most people have, you know, 20, 22 of them on the internet. Mm. And each of those identities have data sets associated with them. Right? Mm. And there's lots of possibilities for errors or mistakes or duplication. Mm. And mm. that is the landscape of the data fabric. Right. Uh, when you know, what blockchain does with its properties of immutability and provenance, mm. right, really ensures that any data set can be considered, evaluated, and, and really uh, validated in terms of you know, what it contains, what it should contain. Mm -hmm. And it provides security in a way that individuals alone control what happens to the data set, right, with the hash keys. Right. So that's the, the fundamental premise of the distributed ledger and blockchain, mm -hmm. where, you know, it's not one entity validating the data. But, you know, we know all of this, right? That's mm -hmm. what the technology does. Mm -hmm. So when we apply that to, say, you know, recruiting or learning, uh, what it, and IBM actually has uh, what we call the learning credential network, mm -hmm. which uses blockchain to manage digital identity and learning mm -hmm. credentials. Mm -hmm. um, so there's you know quite a few organizations working in this space. Um, the Sovereign Foundation has, uh, which you know uh, folks may have heard about, the nonprofit that has looked at how do we manage digital identity? What are the rules of engagement around okay. it? Because mm. that's so important, especially as we navigate, um, mm. you know, in the virtual world and Web 3.0. Mm. Uh, so, you know, so back to the application of blockchain in the, in the talent ecosystem. Mm. Mm. Um, so think about, you know, having a passport or a wallet where mm. our basic data points right from our qualifications and skill credentials are managed and stored yeah. so instead of you know sending over your resume you can still send your resume over which needs to be validated either through a background check or by calling your high school back in in india or your undergrad in india which is you know what happened to me when i was you know um, mm -hmm. um, interviewing for jobs mm -hmm. it's a lot easier because the blockchain will have a validated set of credentials mm -hmm. that can be accessed and shared with organizations mm -hmm. uh, so you know if you apply that into the learning aspect as well what it does is it provides us a validated set of skills and credentials that we can trust 
So because we use blockchain in you know increasingly more and more situations, because of the encryption capability, we can trust what we see in terms of an individual's identity and skill sets. Mm. Now this is really important because when you trust and you you know you believe that people are who they are and they can do what they do, mm. it actually allows for more collaboration. Mm. And when you match this up with the disaggregation of jobs into skills mm. and the rise of the gig economy, mm-hmm. what it's going to do is if we can use technologies like blockchain. I mean, blockchain is not the you know be all and end all, right? Yeah. The yeah. technologies like blockchain to validate mm. skills and credentials, mm. it's going to help us tap into the skills and capabilities of the entire global economy. Mm. More and more people who did not participate in the formal economy will be able to participate. Mm. Uh, you know, people sitting in sub-Saharan Africa or you know a small rural village in in South India, mm. if they can learn to code and their skills are validated and okay. available mm. through the blockchain, you and I can tap into that skill base. Absolutely. So we as a global community will you know think of the power the potential we'll be harnessing Correct. so that i think is is the magic of this kind of trust again you know blockchain is not the only technology and it has you know um, weaknesses and uh, shortcomings mm-hmm. but that is really what we can do by harnessing what i call the universal talent exchange you know in it i i could never have and, and i'm very grateful i get a chance to speak to so many leaders like you i would never have imagined the use of a blockchain to be able to bring so much talent online and have it verified which would open up markets for people around the world for uh, talent seekers in- incredible so elizabeth i have time for one more question uh, for you and i was trying to debate what to ask you but uh, this is for the many many viewers and listeners uh, for our conversation for someone who studied in india has made it right to the top at ibm in america what would you say are three lessons you would want a lot of our viewers and listeners to take away from our conversation so you know ashtosh um i come from a very conservative family in kerala right uh, my parents were scientists and i was you know very privileged to have the benefit of an education uh, and grew up in an environment where education was valued um and you know i think in all our journeys um you know we we've, we've all traveled right we've all traveled so you know I, from kerala i grew up in mumbai um i'm here in new york city raising my family and my girls here mm. um, and i think there's you know really one thing that um i maybe a couple of things but the, the first most important thing i think is you know to thine own self be true i think as um as global sojourners right mm-hmm. and as you know women mm-hmm. uh, in specifically we get so much feedback about expectations on who we are how we're supposed to speak how we're supposed to sit stand eat laugh right and you know going up in india there was lots yeah. of input on who i should be mm. um so the key is really to you know reflect and you know recognize that you know we're minds mm. we're people and right. um you know following that you know that that purpose that mission that we are here for is so critical so to thy own self be true and take all the input and the feedback mm. uh, but also you know don't don't be uh, don't be discouraged or disheartened as you yeah. navigate and seek your own journey so i think that's that's really my my key message and i think the second um thing is really that you know um relationships and people are the same everywhere yeah. and i think if we build those connections especially now in this virtual world Correct. um you know uh, we can work and live and succeed no matter where we are so i think that's really what it is but i would share. how amazing how amazing and on that note elizabeth uh, thank you so much for speaking to me thank you for talking to me about the incredible changes that are beginning to happen uh, in the human resources function and thank you for all the work of you all that you talked spoke about the great resignation even though you don't agree with the, the with the term but thank you for the work for uh, work from home uh, thoughts that you had and the use of uh, technology and most importantly thank you for speaking to me about your book and to me it was an absolute eye opener i had i uh, you know i've not read your book i'm going to get it a uh, copy now but i had absolutely no thank idea you. how blockchains could have been could be used in human resources and our conversation actually opened up that window for me and finally thank you for uh, your words of wisdom for our viewers and listeners thank you again and good luck thank you so much i really appreciate the opportunity and uh, 
I'm delighted to to be part of your um, the story here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You video cast and podcast. A platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.